How many bananas did you think it takes to end a life? According to this website, we need about 50 million bananas to reach a lethal radiation dosage. But why waste all that precious tropical fruits on just killing one person, when we can use them to fund a whole war? I'm talking a total war involving nuclear missiles, chemical warfare, and even dark magic. Our enemy, legions of balloons of all sizes and colors. So join me in the final hours as we wage a desperate war against the tides of balloons in Balloons Tower Defense 6. And as always, thank you for watching. Ever since I was a kid, I've been obsessed with tower defense games. The concept of putting units and buildings along a path and watch them demolish waves upon waves of enemies triggered something so primal in my kid brain. Even years later, as an adult, I still feel like I'm an 8-year-old kid again whenever I play any tower defense game. Which is why I'm very happy I didn't get my hands on the Bloons Tower Defense series when I was a kid. Oh, I would have wasted all my teen years placing monkeys and popping balloons. So a bit about Bloons Tower Defense 6. The game's premise is extremely simple. We got a base, and the balloons are attacking it. We need to place different kinds of monkeys down so they can pop the balloons. That's pretty much it. You might ask why do we play as the monkeys, or why do the balloon attack us, but let me ask you, why do we do anything? Nah, just kidding, I don't know either. All I know is that I'm here to deploy monkeys and shoot balloons. I have not played another tower defense game that's as good as Bloons TD6. When I first got the game, the thing that blew me away was the amount of maps. Most tower defense games offer 20 to 25 unique maps with some bonus ones. Bloons TD6 has not 30, not 40, but 78 maps. 78 roughly divided in 4 difficulties. Some maps are defined by their long straight routes or some with circular designs. And there are water maps so we can place aquatic units in. Sometimes the game spices it up with obstacles to force you to use a different strategy, which can be fun or straight up unfair. What's that? But whatever it is, no two maps have the same structure and flow. Looking at them reminds me of going through the toy store as a kid. Every map is different, but they're all the same type of fun and I just wanna play them all. Bloons TD6 has two scales for difficulty. The first one is for the map structure. The more straightforward and empty maps are easier, while the ones with curves and objects that block the monkey's views are harder. Once a map is selected, we can choose between three difficulties, easy, medium, and hard. These will determine the toughness of the balloons, their speed, and the amount of money we can make popping them. But wait, there's more. After finishing a map, we can replay it with some extra challenges, and some of these would change our strategy on a fundamental level, like unit restriction or no income. Speaking of units, let's talk about the coolest unit designs in gaming. In a tower defense game, the most appealing thing to me is the progression. Being able to unlock and buy cooler and stronger units is half the fun. The other half is seeing them mowing down waves of enemies. And Bloon TD6 did not let me down. Never have I seen more badass character designs than this. We got normal monkeys, magical monkeys, water monkeys, and just when you think the unit types can't get any more absurd, it does. Look at this fella. Back in 1941, they had to make a whole program to teach soldiers about his reload time. We got pirate monkeys, monkey banks, and even monkey tech support. It would legit take a good hour if I just sit here and list all the units and the upgrade stages out. The sheer number of monkey units is baffling, but that's just the start of it. When the units got upgraded, they do more damage and their appearances change too. There are three upgrade paths for each unit, and we can pick two of them. For each upgrade path, there are five stages, with the last one being the most powerful form. Once an upgrade path reaches the third stage, it will lock out the other path, making it so that no two monkeys have to be the same. And as you can see here, once we unlock all the upgrades for a monkey, we can sometimes discover its final form. Being the apex of upgrades, that thing will be the exodia of your run. From the maps to the units, the keyword is customization. Bloons TD6 entrusts the experience entirely in the hand of the players. It's entirely up to us, the players, to make our own fun in this incredible sandbox. But what makes this game truly remarkable are the enemy we face. As I said earlier, the other half of the fun is to watch your strong units destroying waves of enemies. And to be honest, there's barely anything more satisfying than popping balloons. There are so many types of balloons, from small to huge. One thing many games doesn't get right is to visually communicate with players, be it the direction to the next location with a yellow paint, or the danger of an enemy relative to the player. It's not easy to intuitively inform players without an interrupting pop-up, but Bloons TD6 managed to do this perfectly. Taking advantage of the pattern recognition we humans are so good at, the game uses colors of balloons to warn us. The more colorful a balloon, the more dangerous it is. The stealth balloons can only be detected by monkeys with enhanced visions, so they have the camel pattern. There are hard balloons that will spawn smaller ones when bursted. Pattern recognition allows us to detect shapes as well, so some special balloons will have unique patterns or shape to them. By now you might be wondering, does this game have some boss enemies? Because it would be boring with just balloons. The answer is yes, a lot of them. See, the most obvious and intuitive way to tell something is more than something else is size. The boss enemies are huge, gigantic zeppelins that move much slower. And like the Matroska doll, they release a huge wave of smaller balloons when they're popped. 
The color scheme also applies to these enemies. The more hostile the color combination is, the more damage they do to our base. The evolution from a single line of red balloons to a tidal wave of rainbows running at you at breakneck speed is just great. It's just gradual enough that you won't feel like you're being overwhelmed, but at the same time tense enough to not let you be bored. It's such a subtle but genius design because you can look at a run and immediately tell how much progress you've made. Have I mentioned that this is a kid game? From the upbeat and repetitive music to the vibrant colors, Bloons TD6 is a kid's game on first glance. I mean, we're playing with monkeys that pop balloons, so yeah. But the amount of depth this game has feels nothing like a kid's game. While it's easy to write off the monkey designs as childish, I have to admit a monkey that shoots laser or command a warship is pretty badass. And the sheer number of maps, game modes, and challenges is mind-blowing. There are literal years and years of content to be explored and enjoyed. I can imagine this game being someone's entire childhood, because I know damn well it would be mine if I'm 10 years younger. Speaking of this being a kid's game, you'd expect it to advertise the store with all the shiny skins and characters front and center, but look at this menu. The game modes, challenges, and community events stand out first. For the first 10 hours, I wasn't even aware that there's a store to purchase characters and skill point in this game. And that's why Bloons TD6 is the best game with microtransaction. Almost everything can be purchased, but if you don't do it, it doesn't even affect the experience. The game is just as good. In a sea of vapid, soulless games targeted at kids, Bloons TD6 stands out with a lot of souls and passion behind it. In every level, we can feel the amount of care that has went into polishing the experience. The units are unique and badass, the maps offer equal parts of fun and challenge, and my god each time a balloon pops, I get a huge boost of dopamine. Anyways, I heavily recommend this game. Play it like how your 10 year old self would and you'll have more fun than ever. Next video, we're venturing into the polished wilderness for a trip, so stay tuned. Thank you for watching and bye!